another edition of Catching My Second Wind. In this episode, I'm going to apply the shrink wrap. Um, last year I did it by myself and it went along pretty good, you know, a few bumps here and there, but otherwise it did really good for the first time ever. Um, so I got a few essential supplies here. I have a propane tank, a fire extinguisher, just in case. I pre-cut sections of the shrink wrap to make it easier to just haul up on deck and lay over the substructure, the top of the substructure, drape it over. Um, Going to make it quicker and easier to do. And, uh, and I also have the shrink wrap gun. Okay, so when I bought the shrink wrap gun off of Amazon, and I'll note the price up above, I think it was about $380, $400. I decided to buy a professional one. Um, came in this really nice sturdy aluminum case. I have the hose right there, some paperwork, a DVD. Came with these really nice gloves uh, to use as you're painting the shrink wrap. You kind of tap it so it adheres. Um, you can see there's little pieces of shrink wrap on there. But uh, these gloves work great. And here is the shrink wrap gun. Here's the valve that hooks to this. It hooks to the propane tank. And that's what a professional shrink wrap gun looks like. Um, it's saw quite a few BTUs. I don't recall off the top of my head, but I will note that up above. And it really worked pretty good last year. So uh, let's uh, think that cage around it helps to keep, because the tip right there, or the flame comes out, it gets pretty hot, so that helps to kind of keep things away from it. And uh, let's get started. I'm gonna hook it up to the tank, try it, make sure it's working good. The lead right here that goes to that little prong, it's a physioelectric, um, starter and I need to squeeze a little bit more so it stays on that tab a little bit better so um, on this right here um, right here that's where you can take that off and put an extension on I have a three-foot extension I left it at home unfortunately and that enables me to get a little bit greater reach towards the top of the peak to help shrink the film so um, Okay, so let's get started. Oh, here's the shrink wrap. Here's one of the pre-cut sections. There's another pre-cut section, and I have the other pre-cut section in this box that it came in when it was shipped. All right, so I have hooked up the shrink wrap gun to the tank. You may not be able to see the flame. It's definitely working, so that's a good sign. And uh, now I can continue. Okay, so I've hauled up each section of shrink wrap. One for the stern section I have in the cockpit. This one for the mid section between the main and the mizzen. I've just laid up on the top of the cabin here, right over by the second of my two uh, butterfly hashes. And there's the first piece. Uh, what I'm going to do, of course I have my shrink wrap tape and my razor knife. First thing to do will be to, right here in the middle section, I just have the one piece and I'm going to do, I'm going to make a slit about at least uh, two foot long and then I'm going to take this piece of shrink wrap and drape it up so it's mid piece midway in the middle it's hanging on each side on the top of the substructure here the banding that goes from the main mast all the way to the bowsprit pull it back past the mast where i've made my slit and then i'm going to tape it and that'll secure it to that and then i can unroll it all the way down to the bowsprit i'll have to make another slit when i get to where the forestay attaches to the bowsprit and drape that over. 
Pretty sunny out here, a little hot, so I put on my hat to keep the old cappy uh, protected. Okay, so I measured down two feet and I cut the slit. I'm going to put a little piece of tape on there and there just so I don't have to worry about as I lay this up if there's any stress on it or tearing at all. This is pretty tough stuff, but still, I like to take extra precautions. Okay, so as you can probably see, I put a piece of tape right here, and then on the other side, I put a piece of tape right here, just at where the slit I made ends, so to protect it. And now I can drape it up over the banding, move it back past the main, tape it off to the main, and then just roll it, flip-flop rolling it, so it opens up all the way down to where I get to the bowsprit pulpit, or the bowsprit, and then I'll have to make another slit there. I'm just not sure how long a slit I'll need to make. So I'm going to wait till I roll it out. I'm going to move my ladder over there, and I'll make the slit when I get there. All right, since I always try to be as efficient as possible with all the materials I have, uh, and since I'm working alone, I, um, I had just three small sections of the banding that from yesterday. What I did was I tied them all together to make a sling for the shrink wrap tape because there again I'm working alone so that way I don't have to bend down every time I need a piece of tape. So I'm just going to put it over myself. Okay, so I have the sling that I made and the shrink wrap tape on it so every time I need a piece I can just pull it up and grab it instead of bending over to get it. Okay so as you can see here's the first piece of shrink wrap, shrink wrap. I slung it over the support that goes from the main mast to the bowsprit. This came comes back past mast a little bit now I can tape it off and then I can just roll this unroll it all the way down so Okay, so as you can see, I tape it off securely to the mast all the way around. Now I can start flip-flopping it all the way down the length of this support down to the bowsprit, where the forestay attaches to the bowsprit. Okay, so as you can see, it's pretty much almost rolled out all the way to the into the bowsprit where the forestay attaches. Already kind of creating a tent. You can see underneath here and on the starboard side too. So, next step will be to move my ladder, create the slit over by the forestay, pull it down, tape it, and then I can start making some cuts for the shrouds to pull it down past them on both port and starboard and uh, we're just moving right along. Okay so here I am we're at the tip of the bow spritz. Um, I'm going to tape these off all the way around uh, just so I don't have any to worry about any sharp edges probably damaging the um, shrink wrap over the winter possibly causing a tear kind of just like I did right here. Okay so as you can probably see from here I'm midway in the deck I have the front section kind of fitted over the bowsprit, uh, right over by the four stands taped. All right, so I'm going to take this section now, cut a, cut a two foot slit from that line up to the top, and I can slide it over the main mass and then just roll this all the way down this support down to the mizzen. Okay, so as you can see, I've draped the bow section over the port side. And I've cut it to go around the four stays. I taped off the four stays here. There were some sharp edges. And I, as I did up on when I attached it to the mast, I put some tape here just to give it added strength. And here's the piece draped over from the main to the mizzen. Let's tape that and drape it over and make a couple slits for the four stays that it's going to have to go around. Uh, that one and this one. Hello, it's uh, Saturday morning. I'm back here at the marina. 
Uh, I want to apologize. When I was out here last Sunday doing the shrink wrap, I had intended to do much more filming uh, along the way, but I started at 11 a.m. and at some point I realized uh, it, w it wasn't going to be long before it was getting dark and I had a whole lot more to do. I had to get to a certain point. I had to get the shrink wrap completely draped over, uh, all the seams welded, and tucked up under the uh, perimeter band um, and welded around the perimeter band in order to leave that night. And I worked till one o'clock Monday morning. Uh, it's been a long day, I was really tired and I was happy to get out of here, but I was really happy to get to that point. show you real quick where I'm at right now. I came out here today just to use my heat gun to tighten up the shrink wrap and make it taut. So as you can see, chopsticks is completely covered. This is the port side. Kind of take a walk around. Here's where I tucked the shrink wrap up under the perimeter band and heated it. This is the belly band. It kind of keeps it taut. Here you can see a seam going up. Uh, where I welded that seam and then I taped it. You can see uh, right here where I had to cut around the chain plates and the rigging and tape, weld it and tape that. So those are some extra seams. And here's a seam from the piece that stretched from the bow up to the main. And... Um, then I layered over the, uh, the piece that goes from the main to the mizzen and welded that and created a seam there. Here is, you can see how I tucked the shrink wrap up around the bow sprit and right around the forestay there and kind of taped it and welded that. I may put an extra piece around the roller furler just to protect that over the winter. And here you can see a little piece right kind of there. A little loose piece that I'm going to have to get up there and weld and tape. I didn't get to that. Here we are on the starboard side. Pretty much the exact same thing. So you can see how it's not that tight. It's a little loose. And that's why I came out here today to use the heat gun to make it taut. Here again. <clears throat> Here's a perimeter band. I tucked the shrink wrap up under it, <clears throat> heated it up to kind of create a nice firm <clears throat> attachment to right around the perimeter band. And then I have this belly band that I stretch up underneath from one side, port side to the starboard side, and I tighten it off to kind of keep it, keep the shrink wrap down, down on the hull of the boat. And especially when I start to tighten it up with the shrink wrap gun, it may tend to want to pull up a little bit, so it'll only go up so far. Okay, so there's the shrink wrap gun. I'm going to try and show you a little bit how when I use the shrink wrap gun, how you can see the shrink wrap tighten up. You got to really be careful. So, for instance, you probably saw how it just kind of tightens up. It's real easy to burn a hole in it. You see that? That's kind of perfect. It's just going to be like a smooth motion. That may not be perfect all the way around. I'll probably have some wrinkles here and there. Because this is only the second time I've ever done this. But 
for my second time it seems pretty good and you see it's pretty strong but it will it does you can create a real weak spot and you'll see a little translucent you know spot to appear start to appear and then maybe even a little pinhole and you can just tape those it's not that big a deal there have been instances where i put a patch over it and just heated up the patch and you know welded it on so so something like this i might try and tuck a little bit these are already actually kind of tucked right in there And I'll, I'll heat up in there a little bit, and then I'll heat on the top, and I'll just press it together to weld it. Okay, so here is the three-foot extension I have for the shrink wrap gun. And I can swivel the head. Here's a spring-loaded pin. I pull that open, and I can spin it so that it's, so that it's kind of perpendicular to the shaft that feeds the gas, or... So that it's paralleling this shaft, this three foot extension shaft that feeds the gas to it. Okay, so here is the gun somewhat disassembled, the basic parts. You can see the double O-rings here. And you can see the double O-rings here where the head would slide over it. Of course, this is the cable Next to that, it's like a physioelectric um, spark. You can see a little prong in there, a little, just a little tip, creates a spark, ignites the gas. And so maybe as you can see, you can see spots where it's a little tight and then a little wrinkled. Uh, those are areas that I was able to get it to just become more taut. Uh, I'm trying to be careful not to keep the heat gun in any one place too long because I don't want to burn any holes. Uh, you can pretty much expect you might end up with some small holes that you can tape, uh, medium or larger holes. You can always put a shrink wrap patch on, which really is just taking a piece of shrink wrap and maybe taping it in place and then heating it up and just kind of tapping it so it adheres to the other shrink wrap that's uh, it's sitting on top of. But as I said, it, you know, it's not pretty. But it'll be very functional. It'll do the job. It did the job last winter. I have no doubts whatsoever it'll do the job this winter. And you can kind of see uh, right about that spot right there. That's about where I've stopped right now. And I'm just going to keep going around and then go. This is on the port side. And then I'm going to go do the starboard side. So uh, it's definitely a process. You want to take your time. And hopefully I'll be done soon. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick walk around chopsticks. I think I'm going to call the shrimp wrap done at this point. It's not as taut everywhere as I'd want it to be. I'd probably need a longer extension to get all the way to the top of the peak. More over by the main mast. Uh, but once I put my zipper door in, um, then maybe I can get underneath and try and tighten up a little bit or put some stuff in there that will help keep it a little more rigid. Um, I'm very confident that it'll work out fine, though. All right, now I'm in the process of putting the vents in. Like I said, it doesn't look as pretty or as taut all the way around as I would like it to, but I'm not a professional, and I think I've done a really good job overall. For as big of a boat as this is, and for as big of a project it was to tackle by myself, uh, it worked out fine last year. I had no problems whatsoever. The shrink wrap didn't fail. And I'm very confident I'll have the same result this year. And you can see one of the vents that I installed right there. And there's the other vent. I'm going to put four on each side and I'll show you how I do it. Okay, so this is what the vent looks like. This right here is what I use to pierce the shrink wrap, and it goes underneath the shrink wrap like this, and this kind of goes on top. You'll see, because so I'm going to show you as I do one. There's other, there's other different styles of vents, but this is just the one that I like to use. You'll see it maybe pierce. See, it's pierced. I just push it up. And 
And that's it. Now I'm going to run some shrink wrap tape around the sides of it, and then it'll be secure. Lay the piece of tape on it. Just go over it like that. And that one should be pretty secure. Okay. So here's the shrink wrap door. 30 by 36. Bought it at West Marine. Cost me $17.99 plus tax. I would have preferred to get a white one, but they only had the clear. But uh, I'm just going to install it right here. This seems to be like a good spot, an easy spot for me to climb up under, underneath the shrink wrap. So one of the first things I'm going to do is unroll it, and I'm going to just tape it in a couple places to hold it, and then I'm going to tape around the whole perimeter of it, and then I'll be able to unzip the door and cut through the shrink wrap to create my access portal. Okay, so hopefully you can see I taped it off in a few spots just to kind of hold it in place. Now I'm going to tape it around the whole perimeter and then I can unzip it, put this flap up and I can cut into the shrink wrap below it and that'll be my access. Hopefully you can see how I taped around the perimeter of the door. Now I'm going to unzip it, and as I'm unzipping, I'm just going to cut, and I'm going to follow the contour, I'm going to follow the cir circle, and up. Okay, so you can see, uh, I can, you know, just follow the contour of the zipper. Now I have my access to chopsticks over the winter. It's going to be a little tough for me climbing in there, but maybe it's good, it's a little bit loose, I can just, you know, get up kind of under there. Just got to be careful. <laughs> 